let's move on now because our next speaker, uh, Thomas de Brewster, um, who's associated with the Colorado Chamber Orchestra, um, had the experience as a Western trained performer to and conductor and composer, orchestrator, to go and work with the Mohor Ensemble in uh, in Ulaanbaatar, and he'd like to talk to us about his experiences doing that. And in his paper entitled, Composing for the Mongolian State, Mohor Ensemble as a Non-Native, Towards a World Stage for the Mohor Ensemble. Good morning. Um, thank you for the introduction. In a way, um, all of these presentations that are being given today tie in really well to the effort that I would like to uh, to make here. Uh, kind of a, if you will, um, my experience, which is really quite limited once you start hearing the kind of detail it was in the, in the last presentation. Um, uh, my experience was still an incredible experience when I went to Mongolia. <clears throat> and... Uh, and this ensemble, the Board Hora, the State Board Mongolian State Board Hora Ensemble, was just an incredible uh, experience for somebody who's had a, a long life in music already and, and been all, all over the world and heard some of the greatest orchestras in the world, and also some of the greatest uh, rock and pop and jazz musicians. So, and I've got, I've got quite a bit of experience under my belt. I'm, I'm not bragging, I just happen to be that lucky um, <laughs> that this awesome. happened in my career. Um, there will be a translation. So if you, sure. if you yeah. speak too long, my buffer is going to be full. Cool. So, yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Um, Thomas, uh, in the architecture of the Vice Trentigate, um, the Uni, um, uh, Utter Touch Me Hall, the Maroring, Porto, uh, you repeat, yeah, it's hard for the Korean, actually, Jason, you get into Hora, the Greek, the area. So what I'm really trying to encourage here uh, from my experience is the creation of a resource, uh, a usable resource that in the Western tradition we call orchestration, which is a class I've actually taught in college, although I never took it when I was in college. I was able to test out of it due to my own experience. And there, there are long traditions of orchestration books, um, one that many uh, Mongolians would probably be familiar with who would have trained at the conservatory would be Rimsky Korsakov's uh, one of the early manuals on on orchestration. Now I'm not sure that we need to get into something as complex as those. At the same time, um, due to my good friend um, Michael Oko, who's sitting here, and this is how this all happened, right? Uh, and we'll get into that for a second. But she gave me this. A little brochure from the, from the Mongolian State Ensemble. And this was my basis for trying to write a piece of music for the Lord Book Ensemble. Um, um, you, Yamarman, who hooked me with the Greek name, Greek the notes of my shikler, the Yatomai Nag to Chum, uh, Pio, the Tatar, which is about um, you need network to Great. So let's let's uh, just move to the next slide. This will help me make sure that this doesn't go on too long. So this is a picture of myself with the ensemble um, post performance. Uh, again, one of the one of the most remarkable uh, performances that I've ever ever been a witness to. Uh, not just my own my own composition, but the entire concert. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Next. So uh, one of the really wonderful, special things that happened was uh, due to my friend Oko and, and her connections in, uh, in Ulaanbaatar, we actually were able to meet with, at the time, the Deputy Prime Minister, who is now the President of Mongolia, 
who also took a copy of the score of my piece, Postcards to Mongolia, and it is now in the uh, Mongolian archive. Happy now, you need to let you let not of some such a point of the Yugis at this out of you, you need to some out of the most such a person. So I, I mentioned trying to create a resource. I just wanted to show you the, some of the resources that exist in the Western European orchestral tradition. It's, for instance, the Principles of Orchestration by Remsky Korsakov. Um, another one is an old one that was given to me when I was a teenager. It's, uh, it's the Rauscher Orchestration uh, uh, book as well, which is actually a book that has a lot of mistakes in it. So you know, that, that's why it doesn't get used anymore. So, as I said, the basis for my being able to even attempt to write a piece for the Morino Ensemble was this. Uh, this is the newer version. I had an older one that was a brown cover. But, uh, this very small booklet uh, is is the the best that I was able to do in finding a resource uh, as far as a printed resource. The meaning of Austin's author in a mesh between and so dream, uh, mom, we all just sing in order to mini or daughter, he would listen to each of the method of young defense, Austin's very sad. And something that was extremely useful to me, uh, being pretty ignorant about this, uh, the science level was this chart that's in the in the booklet that just kind of shows you the makeup of of the more and orchestra. Uh, this was an, another page from it that was also extremely helpful to me. When you write a score for a, for an ensemble. You need to know what order to put things in the score from the top to the bottom. So this was also great for that. And then, as you'll see at the bottom of this, it starts giving more details about specific instruments in the ensemble. Uh, the most important, and it is very important, and it is the basis of where you start when you're a composer, is that it, is that it gives us uh, it gives us. Uh, the range of the instrument, in other words, how low to how high it can play in terms of pitches. Um, and then if you go on, it, it does this for the uh, for the various forms of the more and uh, the main one being the one at the top, and it shows you the, the instrument range of that. And also, this, this included three instruments that I certainly wasn't familiar with, the Everbury, the Yochin, and the Yachtka. Good day, you know. Orchestrating in the sort of there is was Nicky Senator to do not in a very orange or an air coach with the Yammer which mean of the red during the Yammer Tarasa which to get to her or Jacob of Nadotic. If they meet this is that the Taranov in Hutsul Tund of Joe who smooth in Hassar, Nagin is Grungo, the Mitesi Uxumisa, to get a talk near Jarangi, not of the Maro or a pot of Maro or the Taran Pond, the whole day to get. Um, Great. Um, so I just would like to show a few examples from an orchestration book that I use when I teach. Um, uh, so that we can understand how um, it would be great to develop a resource for the more and more ensemble for the Mongolian traditional instruments uh, that that we're not familiar with uh, in in more detail than the current um, little thin brochure that I have from <laughs> from the more and more ensemble. So, uh, I think that you are uh, very so if, if you look at this uh, this table of contents, I guess I can walk around with this. Uh, um, you you can kind of see a lot of the, of the detail uh, that occurs. For instance, just to take kind of a 
uh, an example, the violin, it has the various properties of the violin, but it then, and then it will also show typical violin scorings. Um, oh, here's like the first painting. So, so this is actually, uh, again, more detail where it like for a uh, European orchestra, it, it just um, takes the whole family of string instruments from violin down to bass and kind of talks about general things, which would also be very applicable uh, that you could do that with all of the bowed uh, string instruments in a more and more ensemble. Mm -hmm. So, so you might wonder, you know, how did I even figure out anything? And I'm not claiming that I wrote some fantastic music or that I wrote something that was particularly idiomatic to the Moore and Hura ensemble. And that's why the piece is called Postcards to Mongolia, because <laughs> it was my effort to try to embrace what I could and, and take it to you, uh, to, to, to them. Um, so what I did end up doing beyond the brochure was that I spent a lot of time on YouTube trying to find, as this was already referenced over here, trying to find uh, videos of people uh, performing on these instruments. And especially ones that really focused on the hands and showed some of the techniques that were going on. Өөрийнхөө if we get back one slide up back uh, for just a moment. So I'd like to point out a section here because it, well, I'm going to make reference to it uh, in terms of what I would have really liked to have. There's a whole section here on effects, special effects that, that one can do on a string instrument. And of course, with a lot of the, all instruments, there are special effects. But even when I was seeing these YouTube videos, I had no idea how I would notate that. So I kept things simple in order to stay out of trouble with those sort of things. So this is another page for the book. It uh, shows you how with a with a orchestral string and a western orchestral string instrument, it gives you very detailed, um, uh, you know, information about how. The different things that are on the instrument and it just gives you a really great description so that you really uh, first of all have a feel of that and then this is another following page with the violin. The most, one of the most useful things about this particular orchestration book, and I think should be in all, no matter what instrument or what culture, but it gives the range of the instruments, which the 
the brochure that I have uh, gave, but it gives them in for professional high school and elementary level uh, players, which is extremely useful uh, when we, you know, if you're working as a composer or an arranger, you know, maybe you're writing for a high school group or you're writing for, for kids. Um, you, you should know that information. It's very helpful. Uh, and it's in kind of going back to the previous presentation, we spoke about how the one string has different qualities from the other. That's also addressed. You know, that would have been something I really wish I'd known. <laughs> Um, this page um, shows some examples from the repertoire of orchestral music for the violin, different ways of writing for it, sometimes some sort of special effects like uh, some lissandos and so on. So again, this would be real useful information uh, when writing for the Mongolian instruments to, to have. So I'm just kind of trying to show um, the information that I wish I had had, uh, but didn't have in this process so that we can hopefully develop a resource that will in 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 So another aspect to uh, and and it's going to be coming all day in these seminars time one is dealing with a different culture from the one that you've you're familiar with um, one has to understand the history of uh, of 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 the culture and of course you know in the united states we all know who uh chingis khan is but we don't really know that chingis khan is still a really vibrant part of the mongolian culture so that's why i show you the picture of myself in front of the chingis khan uh, because it's something I came to really understand while I was in Mongolia. Mm-hmm. So um before I before I kind of conclude uh, the, the fun part of it, if you will, um what I, I think I think that this resource would be developed where it would it would expand this booklet but not not to this point it doesn't need to do that in the modern age i think what it could do is we expand this to something like this and then there should be a website set up with folks playing the various different instruments you know showing the detail uh, of of how they play these things because I mean that was certainly it was just fascinating I especially 
I got really, really enraptured with the uh, with the Yatka uh, because a lot of the players that I witnessed on YouTube and then subsequently in the Moran Horansama were just these phenomenally virtuosic musicians. So I that there should be, in addition to a written resource, uh, some kind of website resource, and that there should be included, you know, in terms of like history and so on, maybe a bibliography of, of places to go to get a better grasp of the overall culture. Because, you know, one of the things I understood after being in Ulaanbaatar uh, was, was the real dominance of the horse. I mean, it should be obvious, right? Uh, the Mordor is a horse-headed fiddle. But until you really are, you know, when you're really there, then you understand how important the horse has been throughout the history. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Website байх хэрэгтэй байна. Тэр хөвчмүүдийг тоглодог энэний талаар ярьдаг хүмүүсийн бичлэг одоо танилцуулдаг тийм юм одоо зайлшгүй шаардлагатай гэж бодож байгаа юм би. Тэгээд а юуны Монголд бол одоо жишээ нь морь бол одоо а морь бол одоо асар том гэдгийг би бол одоо очиод мэдэрсэнгүй яг уу тэгээд морин хуур гэдэг юу өөрөө морин толгойтой хөвчмө одоо хуур хөвчмө гэж байгаа гэсэн одоо яг тэрнээс хараад Одоо гэдэг юм морь ям монголчуудад ямар ч ухах юм бэ гэдгийг бол бас тэрс тэр болгоо ойлгодоггүй юм тэгээд ийм юмнуудыг би одоо энэ а одоо хөвчлөлтөө их хөө энэ хэлхийг хийсэн юм гэсэн гэдэг нь би бодтгож одоо дуудыг гэж бодож байгаа юм and and it's important to understand those kind of things because for instance there's a rhythm often in mongolian music on the on the more and especially you know dum da da dum da da dum da it's a horse rhythm it's galloping or a walking horse kind of a, a rhythm so I, I really like try to incorporate that into my piece the mongol hovchmd odo chi yalangoy morin horod bol odo oor ins oor ins himnil uddig tir himnil bol odo ayl hunchta odo morin morini avdal morini avshaar ishge tir yam bol himnil dursilsan baydig urchiras bi oori hoyn bitsen hovchmdo ch gisen bas tirig n baryantlhay khichej bas oorlsan ma you know with the everbury which is uh it's a woodwind instrument sort of somewhere between a, a clarinet and a saxophone but its heritage is that it was a hunting horn and in my piece that's how i use it the, it opens the beginning of my postcards to mongolia is this horn call played by the everbury <laughs> одоо тэр нэг өвөрмөс хөвчин байгаа хэвэр бүрэ гэж хэвэр бүрэ гэдэг хөвчин бол кларинет саксофон хоёрын дунд чим шиг юм боо та гэхдээ яг ингээд үүхд үхэн сохиод үзэх юм бол одоо анчдны дуудлага маягийн тийм ивэрэл ивэрэл гэдэг юм одоо бүрэ нэг хөвчин зүйлс байсан гэж ингэж үздэг тэгээд одоо миний энэ бичсэн цохиод ихэн дуудлага бол энэ хөвчин бол ивэр бүрэ гэдэг тавсан юм гэсэн үг юм some more, more pictures. It's my wife, Anoko, and uh, old, and of course, the current president. I'm going to the And you know, the, the, the current president, when he met with us here, this was one of the really great moments in my visit to Mongolia was that uh, he he was able to tell me some things about the history of the Mord Hur and its and its place in central place in the culture of the nation that I don't think I would ever hear out of a politician in the United States. Mm. <laughs> That's it, right? Yep. Great. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm.